Now I say this a lot, but how cool is this? This is Lieutenant Zach Farrell. This is Colonel Bill McPherson, the amazing Gene Kranz. You've never seen aerospace like this. During the Korean War, U.S. forces began using helicopters in warfare to a much greater extent. But existing helicopters lacked power and required a lot of maintenance. So the Army held a competition for a new design. In 1955, Bell Helicopter won the competition by building the HU-1A Iroquois, quickly nicknamed the Huey, which was later redesignated the UH-1A. During the Vietnam War, Hueys were uniquely suited to the challenges of fighting in the dense jungles, mountains, seasonal flooding, and a lack of general infrastructure in the country. The versatile Hilo was flown by the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, as well as the Air Forces of many other countries. Nearly 65 years after the Hueys' introduction, a few crews are still flying the venerable helicopter, but it has been widely replaced by the UH-60 Blackhawk. Still, Huey pilots have a saying, when the last Blackhawk goes to the boneyard, there will be a Huey crew there to pick them up. Now let's check out some of the features of the UH-1 Huey at Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum. Now, what you didn't know is this is a Mike model, an M model, which was made specifically as a gunship, which means it's got a kind of an interesting rotor head. It's a 540 rotor head, which gives the, the blades way more play on the left, right, front, and back. That's because these guys carried a ton of ammunition, and you needed to be as maneuverable as possible because 1,400 horsepower sounds like a lot, but when you're carrying rockets and machine gun ammo and a bunch of people, that's not a lot of power. Plus, you got the humidity of Vietnam. That's not good for lift either. All right, people, this is the good stuff. I am here with a real live helicopter pilot who was in Vietnam, and you did how many tours? Three. Three tours. This is Colonel Bill McPherson. Thank you so much for being with us here today. This is a huge honor because, I hate to say it, but I consider you a friend of mine. We'll think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, going back to the history of this thing, this guy actually flew in Vietnam. It was built in 1967 by Bell Helicopter in Fort Worth, Texas. So it went directly to Vietnam in 1967 and was issued and assigned to the 1st Battalion, 9th Air Cavalry Regiment, 1st Air Cavalry Division, Air Cavalry Division. So <laughs> No horses, just helicopters. That's right, that's right. And it served for three years. Wow. combat. It has uh, 21 bullet holes to uh, verify its combat time. It was used extensively as support for ground troops who needed gun support. It escorted troop carrying aircraft. It escorted medical evacuation aircraft and was extremely busy for three years, which takes a toll on the mechanics, the turbine, the rotor systems. So at the end of three years, it was shipped back to Bell Helicopter for rebuild in Amarillo, Texas. And as the war was winding down, they decided not to send it back to Vietnam, but issue it to the National Guard. So it was okay. issued to the Nebraska Army National Guard in 1971. And it was in 1996 that it was directed to fly to uh, White Sands to become part of this target drone program. And as, as the program was canceled a few years later, 
it sat there on the airfield until I was able to retrieve it. Well, tell you what, do you want to do a little quick walk around and sure. we can actually take a look at some of these places where it was shot? 